Hey everybody, this is Josh with RMS Roller Grinder. Uh, today I'm here with Colin with Groff Julius, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about Feed Mill 101. Um, so why don't, uh, Colin, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and how Groff Julius got started, and what the mission is. Sure. So again, my name is Colin Julius. Really appreciate the uh, invite to talk today, Josh. Looking forward to the conversation. And uh, Groff Julius has three partners, myself, Taylor Groff, and my brother, Ian Julius. And uh, we started this business with the focus of turnkey projects, turnkey capital projects in the commercial grain, feed manufacturing, and human food infrastructure space. A few years ago, we recognized that uh, there was a need for a sophisticated design build contractor that was excited about those spaces, excited about agriculture, and excited to take projects from the imagination stage at the very beginning all the way through construction, design, and uh, through startup and automation, even through, you know, through commissioning of all the equipment to make sure a customer has a good experience from start to finish when doing a uh, expansion project. Sounds good, yeah, I appreciate that background. So when you guys started uh, in 2021, what have been the, uh, the biggest changes you've seen within the industry over the last three years? Right now in our area, it seems like the feed manufacturing space is uh, really stretched on capacity. Just the other day I was talking to a, a feed mill manager who said that they were struggling to keep the feed, uh, keep up with demand on feed and, and struggling to, to be able to put enough people on to keep all the shifts busy. And so they looked to other feed mills in their area to kind of fill that gap and, and nobody had any additional capacity. So for us, that's a good thing because it puts us in a position where the feed mills are looking to do some expansions to increase capacity. And a lot of that's being driven by additional animal housing that we see going on in, in our market sector. So that's one way that we've seen things change in, in the feed manufacturing space. But then uh, additionally, we're also noticing a generational shift as uh, facilities are changing hands and changing from uh, uh, you know th those that are going into retirement and uh, handing over the keys to the next generation for, for leadership. And what we're finding is that this next generation is very excited about the, uh, the business that they're in, very excited about producing feed, producing high quality feed, but they don't really have time to run construction projects. And so what they really are looking for is for somebody to come in and partner with them and be able to take their project from beginning to end without them needing to disrupt what they're doing and growing their businesses. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, definitely an ever-changing market and excited to see where it goes over the next few years as well. Um, so let's, let's jump into some of the Feed Mill Basics 101. Um, so if a customer is looking to uh, build a new feed mill or to renovate their existing mill, what are the first steps a customer should take? Whenever I start working on a, a design or layout for a feed mill, I always say that I start with traffic flow. So having trucks uh, in and out of your facility seems to be one of the most critical aspects of deciding how a facility is going to be organized and laid out. So that's a big thing to think through. Where are the trucks coming in, going out? Where does it make sense for receiving and for load out? Those types of things. Um, so traffic flow is a key. Production capacity, I mean, it may seem relatively simple to say, well, how much capacity do I want my mill to do? Um, but there's a lot of things that are happening on a feed mill simultaneously. So you're unloading a truck while you're grinding, while you're mixing, while you're conveying, while you're loading out. And so it, it, just to have one piece of equipment that does a specific capacity, you have to have the, the holistic system uh, designed to be able to support that flow and in order to take material from the receiving trucks all the way to load out and continue with that, that production capacity all the way through. So that's a big piece of it to think through. Uh, maybe and then the last thing I would throw out there would be ingredients. So in today's market, there does seem to be quite a plethora of animal protein, vegetable protein, ingredients that are going into, uh, into the feed. They all flow differently through ingredient bins. And so it is important at the beginning stages of any project to understand what ingredients and what material uh, is going to be flowing through the system. So it is designed appropriately to handle that. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll definitely some very important parts of the process that you want to make sure you got your head wrapped around. What, uh, what are some more common mistakes that people make when they start this process? When I think about maybe uh, mistakes or missteps, one aspect I have seen growing uh, in a big way in, our, in, in feed milling is um, the regulations for NFPA and dust control, dust hazard analysis uh, type of things, type of uh, uh, reports and whatnot, and how that drives the design of a mill. So it's one thing to think through the flow of the products through the system, but uh, the NFPA requirements, the building code requirements, 
are telling us now that it's not good enough that we can just put the equipment in, but we also need to be very worried about life safety. And uh, dust accumulation in a facility is a big concern for life safety. The, the DHAs and the NFPA requirements are typically based almost exclusively around bucket elevators and bag houses as far as pieces of equipment that, that really need to be controlled. Um, it's one big advantage I see on roller mills is that to have a roller mill set in place, in flow, in a, in a feed mill as your primary grinding piece of equipment, it requires a little bit of dust mitigation, a little bit of draw from a dust collection system, uh, which can be easily handled even with a unit small enough to stay underneath of the uh, NFPA requirements for explosion mitigation, things like that. Whereas a, a hammer mill needs quite a bit of airflow through to get um, the material pulled through the screens. And so that additional piece of a bag house that would need to be added to a hammer mill grinding machine adds another layer of, uh, of complexity in the design of needing to manage that bag house effectively with explosion uh, relief panels or maybe chemical suppression bottles or however you're going to manage the potential for dust explosion inside of the bag house. So being able to stay away from that with a roller mill has been a, a huge benefit to us as we've looked at system layouts. Interesting, very interesting. Um, so what, uh, what process does Graf Julius go through uh, when you're trying to help a customer to, um, choose the right equipment for their feed mill? It has to fit physical size. That's a pretty simple one. Um, recognizing what space we have to work with and, and finding the right uh, shape of equipment to, to fit that space. Um, appropriate service life, you know, the, you know, those are kind of the nuts and bolts answers would be what is it, how does it fit, and then, you know, picking the right machine for the right service duty. Is this something that's going to be running 24-7, needs to be industrial duty like your RMS roller grinders are set up to run all the time, right? Well, um, you know, and, and what, what level of production capacity are we asking of the machine? That's a big, a big piece of that. But I think for us, we look a lot also at the future. We want our customers to be able to grow and to set them up well for that. So when we get into equipment sizing and specification programs, we oftentimes want to understand what their future goals are so that we're not going to put them into a bind uh, in the near future. Um, and then maybe a last thing to think through would be company reputation and experience. So you want to pick equipment companies that are nice to work with, easy to work with, and uh, we know that RMS has been a great fit for us uh, from a reputation standpoint. Appreciate the kind words. Um, when you say, uh, you know, future proofing and, and looking forward and trying to make sure you have the right piece of equipment, uh, why else is it important to pick the right equipment the first time? It's, it's a costly thing to, uh, to change out a piece of equipment down the road. So um, I I'll always uh, kind of jokingly say to customers, there's never a cheaper time than now to do a project, right? I haven't, in my career at least, haven't seen a scenario where a project was less expensive two or three years later than it was previously. Things just tend to get more expensive over time, and there's steel pricing fluctuations, some things like that that could be some anomalies, but in general, labor goes up. And so it's important to, to size right the first time because your equipment um, specification for what it's going to be doing for you, that future proofing, it affects, like we said earlier, not just that piece of equipment, but all the surrounding infrastructure. So it's important to, to think about the future and be designing well for the future so you're not, uh, you know, so it's not more expensive to make that upgrade in the future. For sure. So uh, how, do, how does choosing the right piece of equipment affect the quality of the final product a feed mill is able to produce? Yeah. So um, the, the having the right piece of equipment on grinding is, is a huge deal. It, it, there are some applications potentially where a hammer mill still fits as a low cost option, you know, where there's not a lot of quality needs. However, um, we know that what we've seen with the RMS roller mills and the, and the roller grinders is an increased uh, consistency and uh, in the product coming out so we don't have a lot of mixture of fines and bigger pieces. It's a very consistent product coming out. Um, that consistency gives us a lot better flowability, not only of the ground product, the ground corn, but also good flowability of the finished feed product. That's important when we're trying to get it to flow through flex auger systems at the farm. Um, and those kind of things. So uh, that flowability is a big deal. We've also seen digestibility improvements. So whether you're feeding hogs or chickens or cows, these animals are responding better to roller milk uh, grind corns. I mean, I, I don't have any specific uh, research papers to cite for that, but a lot of anecdotal responses from our customers who are saying they're seeing improvements in the return on milk for dairy cows, or they're seeing improvements in the gut health on, on hogs because of going to the roller mill system. So those are some, some uh, big things to think about when choosing the right piece of equipment is that 
you know, what, what, I'm, what I'm putting out the door, is it the best quality feed I can, and how does that help my customer? You know, and then the last thing is choosing the right piece of equipment can give you flexibility. Um, with the RMS uh, roller grinder, especially the VersaMill, we've seen the ability to go from a very coarse grind, 1500 micron plus, and within a click of a button be running 500 micron um, fine ground corn. So that ability to have one piece of equipment that can produce a lot of various grinds not only is beneficial for being able to produce a lot of different feeds, uh, you know, a lot of various variety of feeds with one piece of equipment there, but also to adjust to the changing uh, landscape in feed manufacturing. So if the nutritionists change their minds on what grind size they think works best for the animals, it is extremely simple to make that adjustment with the roller mill on the fly and, and meet that demand. Uh, very good, very good. So if uh, if somebody's looking to see how Ralph Julius can assist them in getting started in this process, uh, what do they need to do to get started? Our website, grofjulius.com, is a great place to get started. You can learn more about us. You can learn more about what we call the Groff Julius process, kind of the four key points that we that we hone in on to make a project work from start to finish. And then uh, Taylor, myself, or Ian are all very uh, uh, excited to talk to anybody about potential projects uh, via phone call. We love catching up with uh customers and potential customers on the phone get to know each other and uh, build the opportunity to uh, work toward a future project. Very good. Well, Colin, I greatly appreciate your time, everybody. I appreciate you for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions about how to get started with a feed mill, feel free to reach out to Groff Julius or RMS Roller Grinder. We'll get you pointed in the right direction. Thanks.